Hello everyone, this is Ron, and again I am back with another episode of Empire Coins and Collectibles. Actually, we've uh, made several types of videos. We've made episodes, we've made showcases, we even made a few shorts. Hopefully you've seen the shorts, but this is episode number 51, or somewhere around there. Miss Empire kind of moves things around to her satisfaction, so I'm kind of out of the decision-making process there. I guess that's as it should be. If mama's not happy, uh, nobody's happy, just so you know. So this is a continuation of our coin searching from mint sets that we started in the last episode. So before we go any further, let me just remind you, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. That will help us grow our channel and we'll reach more people sharing the joy of coin collecting. That's correct. I get a lot of enjoyment out of this, and hopefully you do too. So what is it we're going to show to you today? Well, in the previous episode, I showed you uh, Susan B. Anthony coin with a unique structure in the hair. It kind of looked like a wire, but we weren't sure. It could have been a die crack or, or something else. And then I showed you some machine doubling that looked close like a double die, but it wasn't definitive enough, so I think it's machine doubling. We found those by opening cellophane uh, packages of coin or mint sets. Well, it's the same year, 1979, and we found a few more interesting coins. Both of these, however, are dimes, and they're not your normal error. Something perhaps you might even overlook, but it is a variety of errors that's uh, a collectible probably doesn't add a lot of value to the coin. It could if it were highly pronounced. Uh, and one of these perhaps is, I'll let you be the judge of it. But without anything else being said, I'm kind of rambling on. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the coin under the coin microscope. Let me change the view. This is the first one. So, what you're looking at is a 1979 Roosevelt dime, and it's right out of a mint set. And we're seeing some scuffing or something that was done in the minting or handling at the mint of this particular coin. We also see some pronounced and maybe overstruck, maybe there's a bit of overpressure here when the coin was actually minted, but you can see the dimples that are around the head of Roosevelt. Uh, what else? Well, this is kind of interesting. Look at the W in we. That is bordering on the very edge of the coin. And now how does that happen? And this is the clue to the type of error that we're looking at today. If you look up here, this edge looks a little thicker up in this area than it does in this area. So what we're looking at is a coin that is just a tad off-centered, and it might have jostled a bit in the collar just before or as it was being struck. And when it did that, some interesting features erupted. One of them we've already looked at, the W being within the actual border of the cuff of the coin, the, the edge of the coin. We see the thickening of the edge of the coin up here. The thinning, is that a word? <laughs> the thinning of the coin to the southwest, that would be from here to here. And we see something else. We see what appears to be some of the reading flipping up and over the edge. Now, you know, there's a couple of ways that could happen. If the coin actually tilted a bit, perhaps in the collar as it was being struck. And, you know, the collar comes in and as the coin is struck, the metal flows out and the reading is created on the edge of the coin. But this is kind of creeping up on the top of the coin. If there is a die clash where some of that has occurred with where the impression or the image is created within the hammer die, then each and every coin would have something that looks like this. But all we can say is that the coin kind of moved around in the collar and we had these extra features uh, impressed or minted on the coin. So I like it. It's Again, it, it may not be all that expensive, 
It's worth more than a dime, most certainly, maybe a few dollars. But we have the we on the edge, the W, I should say. We have the I actually encroaching upon it. Then we have these little dimples on the surface of the perimeter of the coin. And then we have the thickening of the edge of the coin up here. Let's go down a little bit lower and get you a better look at it. We're going to come out of focus a bit. Now, see, you can see that a lot better. You can see that the W clearly, whoops, is encroaching or has encroached upon the edge of the coin. And we can see a bit of railroading here. Look at that. That is a big clue that the coin has shifted in the collar, that railroading right there. So it's all very instructive when you look at the coin. This probably could have been uh, the result of grease right there. So it might be a bit of a grease era up in this area. But we do have that very dimpled look where this is recessed quite a bit. And you can actually see the sloping down here. Now I'm going to flip it over. There's not much of interest on the other side. On the other side, we're seeing the thickening over in this area and the thinning of it over in this area. But we're not seeing much more, are we? Most of the results of that shifting in the collar, as far as the image is concerned, is showing up on the averse. Now we are seeing some shadowing here. And because of that big pressure in minting the coin, the, this it's not really doubling, but it appears to be. It's metal flow out of that lettering into this area. Okay, And it could also be slightly due to the shifting of the coin, but not a whole lot, I don't believe. Look over here at the C. Send a little bit of that there. Let's go down a little lower. Bring it back into focus. And you can see that, yeah, we've got a little bit of, of uh, perhaps machine doubling here where it shifted a bit. Uh, this over here, not so much now. Let's see. Turn it around. Yeah, you can see a little bit in the C, but it's not really significant in any way or form. The E actually looks better. You can see it there, right? But not much else. It's a well-struck coin, given the pressure that was that it was uh, placed under. But anyway, I think this is very interesting and very instructive. The next coin I'd like to show you, I've already got packaged up. So let me just turn the lights out here. And I'm going to, I'm shutting the light, one of the lights on my microscope down because it really glares on the cellophane of the flip that we've got it in. So I've got that shut down. We're going to bring it back into focus. Now I'm just going to, move the light around. You tell me, what do you see in this coin? What type of error do you see? Well, I'm not sure if it's due to some type of shifting in the collar or if it's mechanical uh, damage done in the handling of the coin as it went through the press machinery and then was extracted. Maybe the extractors did this. Look at that right there. It's all very uniform. And the other interesting thing is if you look at the indentions of the reading on the edge of the coin, a lot of this does line up with the indentions on the reading of the coin. So I don't know. Um, it could be due to a collar shift and slight rotation of the coin within the collar tilting. But I don't see any evidence other than that, perhaps a little bit of railroading here. But this might have been done with kind of a, a tool to extract the coin and push it on through the rest of the processing at the mint. I don't know. What do you guys think? I do not believe it is due to damage from outside the mint. This looks like it's done by a machine part of the minting process. It does bear more research on my part. Let me flip it over and let you take a look on the back side. You can see some of the similar markings over here. Isn't that interesting? Now, let's keep the orientation in mind. This, I'm just flipping over 
So they should be the readings on the same side. And it is, I mean, the uh, cutting into the image on the edge of the coin. So what we're seeing then is something that to do with how the coin was struck. We've got a little bit of damage up here. I don't know if that is uh, due to the minting process. Let's just go down a little bit lower and see what we can see. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want to take a better look at it. No, not really. It looks like it might have been one of those cuffs that came across or those cuts that came across. But here you can see it really good. Look at it. All in a uniform direction. And you can see where the reading is down here on the edge of the coin. So certainly this is an error that was created at the mint in a very pronounced way and it's going into my collection. Just to be curious and to be complete, this coin will go into Anax in a future date to be certified. And I'm not so concerned about the grade, I'm more concerned about it identifying the type of error it is. All right, my friends, let's go back to the main camera. This was kind of short and sweet. That's the way it should be. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, remember, I found this by going out and buying a lot, several old mint sets that were in the cellophane wrapper. And then I came in and cut them up and put them in uh, flips. Not all of them. I'm still processing them. And so these are some of the errors that I found, very unique types of errors. So you can do the same thing. You go out there and cherry pick. Find the best that a dealer has to offer or maybe hasn't gone through and did his own or her own search. And if you can find unsearched lots, buy them, bring them home, go through them and see what you too can find. You may find a treasure like I have in this last coin. Okay, my friends, that's it. You take care of yourself and I will see you in the next episode. All the best. Thank you.